We're joined by Jeffrey Tucker, Editorial Director with the American Institute for Economic Research, and Peter Schiff, CEO of Euro Pacific Capital. So, Peter, let's start with you. You've been calling this entire correction for at least a good year now, but this is now looking more like a full-blown recession rather than just a correction. So are the markets in oversold territory? Is the 11-year bull market finally over? Well, the bull market is clearly over. I mean, just look at the numbers. But I've been calling for not just a correction. I've been calling for a bear market, and we're in one. But more uh, problematic, this is the beginning of the greatest financial crisis in U.S. history. The financial crisis of U.S. of 28, 2008 will pale in comparison, as will the severity of this recession. We're going to have a much greater recession than the one that we had in, in 2008. Uh, the difference is going to be this one is actually going to have inflation. We're going to have rising consumer prices and a falling dollar, which is going to make it so much worse uh, than what was experienced 10, 12 years ago. And now, Jeffrey, do you agree with this assessment that we're actually in store for a worse recession than we saw 10 years ago? Because we're, we're, we're definitely going into a bear market. And what's that going to look like? Yeah, look, the numbers are going to show recession. I, I think a couple of weeks ago, I might have said they, they, we would have chopped off a, a point or two from the GDP in the first quarter, maybe the second quarter. But, but, but now it's, it's, it's going to approach negative territory. I think by the summer, when we look back at these numbers, it's going to look uh, extremely grim. I think where I differ with, with my friend Peter is that I actually think it's possible that we could get out of this thing pretty quickly uh, uh, come the fall and the winter, and things could be uh, restored very quickly. I don't. I think Peter has a, a bit of an apocalyptic view. Now, let me just tell you, I'm speaking to you from New York right now, and it does seem Whoa. like the apocalypse. I mean, Broadway was just shut. You know, uh, you know, everything's closing down. Uh, it's a disaster. Uh, the U.S. has handled this this pandemic yeah. uh, crisis in in the, the wrongly across the board in every conceivable way. So oh. <clears throat> if, if you can do yeah. something wrong, the, the, the government authorities have yep. done it, for sure. And the Fed's not going to help. Congress yeah. isn't going to help. But this my is point, my, Jeff, Jeff, again, <laughs> yeah, let me make a point. I'm not talking about the coronavirus. That's not the problem. I know. The coronavirus know. is just the pin. The debt bubble is the problem. It doesn't matter. The coronavirus can be cured. The damage is already done. The debt bubble is imploding. You know, if it wasn't the coronavirus, it would have been something else. This bubble has been looking for a pin for years, and it finally found one. So now we have to deal with the consequences of the disease that the Fed inflicted us with. That's what we have to worry about, not the coronavirus. And unfortunately, the Fed's cure for the coronavirus is going to be fatal for the economy. Well, to point out to Jeffrey's point, I do think while past performance is not indicative of future performance, it has been noted that the faster the fall, the faster the recovery is. So we've seen that time and time again. And so the last time when we had such a dramatic fall, the recovery time was only a span of 13, 14 months, it, rather than the trickle down bear market, in which case then the recession actually lasts for 26 months. So we can always argue about this, but let's talk about the massive fiscal stimulus package at hand. We saw everything between equities, treasuries, gold, even Bitcoin got puked up today because there was no clear, definite plan on stimulus to help spur recovery. So will we see a recovery and a comeback once we have policy in place? I mean, look at China. While the entire Western world down here is down between 5 to 10 percent today, the Shanghai Composite is actually down only 1.5 percent. The Korean, the Korean index is only down about 2 percent. Is that because that they responded appropriately, Jeffrey? Uh, yeah, look, um, I, 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 I don't agree with my, my good friend Peter, and we've, we've, we've spent years arguing about this. Um, I, I, look, as I said, the U.S. has done everything wrong. Uh, the stimulus package is, is, is utterly pointless. The, this, this is just government officials trying to make headlines and, and make news and do what they think they're supposed to do. But it, it means nothing. The fiscal stimulus would mean nothing. The, the Fed's actions overnight. 500 uh, million, a billion, a billion, whatever. It, it's, this is all just it's, it's press releases. Um, it's not going to have any effect. I also don't happen to believe it's going to lead to some sort of hyperinflation. I think we're, we're faced with a, with a short-term deflation, as we've seen from, from virtually prices and everything, from financials to oil to, to, to cryptos. So, um, I, you know, nothing Washington is going to do right now is making any difference. Maybe a month ago, there could have been a repeal of tariffs and things could have you know, uh, gone better. 
but it's not going to make any difference right now. But I, I do think that once the panic, and let me just tell you, it is panic out there. I've never seen anything like it. I've, you know, my whole life I've never seen anything like this. I'm, I'm in New York City right now, and, you know, yeah, the bars well, are just full wait, because Jeff. people are drinking You're going to see much. something much worse. <laughs> go, yeah. Go ahead, well, Peter. Look. It's going to be much worse when people realize that the, it's not the virus that they need to panic about. It, it's, the, it's the collapse of this bubble. That is the problem. The fiscal stimulus is going to make the situation worse. The U.S. is broke. There is no money to stimulate the economy. All we could do is print money. We're going to crank up the printing presses. We're effectively dropping money from helicopters. But if the coronavirus does anything, it's going to reduce the supply of goods. So after this initial decline of prices, prices are going to go up because there's not going to be very much to buy. The supply of goods is going to go down. Meanwhile, the supply of money is going to go through the roof. And, you know, if the Fed had not already intervened massively today by artificially suppressing Treasury yields, yields would have risen much more substantially than they already have. And we would have seen a much bigger decline in the stock market because the bond market is imploding because there is too much debt. Not only did the coronavirus prick the stock market bubble, not only did it prick the crypto bubble, but it pricked the bond market bubble. The Fed is trying to keep the air from coming out because it realizes what's going to happen when interest rates actually rise in an economy that is laden with debt thanks to all of the artificial stimulus in the past. And now, Peter, I just want a little bit of a clarification as we talk about this, because I don't, I don't want anybody to be confused about your stance on this. Now, obviously, I, I believe you're saying the coronavirus is not what's causing the market collapse. But you're saying, but I just want to make sure that you do understand the, the coronavirus, in your opinion, is in fact a pandemic that is ravaging the world right now. And you got about 30 seconds to, to respond to that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not downplaying the coronavirus. What I'm saying is this is the pin that pricked the bubble. In 2008, it was real estate prices going down. That pricked the bubble. Uh, but this is pricking a credit bubble. So we have two problems. We have the coronavirus, right, which is a health problem and maybe an economic problem, too. But then we have the credit bubble that has just imploded. If we had a viable economy, if the Fed did not encourage all this excessive leverage and debt, right. then economically we could weather this storm. But because the Federal Reserve right. left us so vulnerable, because we levered up so much, mm -hmm. uh, now we're having a crisis. That is the problem. Absolutely. The black swan that no one expected this year. Peter Schiff and Jeffrey Tucker, thank you both for your time. But hang in there because we want to bring you back later in this show.